we're going to see if um, more people join. Um, but essentially, um, what I want to chat about um, is how we evolved from a community 1.0 to um, community 3.0. And obviously, um, this is something that is, um, I think, very relevant to the times that we are, um, you know, experiencing now. I think it's very relevant to see how we've evolved from something that was very, very tied to a physical space. Um, if we think back on, on communities, and as you can see from um, your typical definitions of community, they were very much tied around the region that you were in. You belong to a community because you were born in a particular space and you lived in a particular place. Um, and so what I like to to call this is really community 1.0. It's, it's that very, very uh, beginning of community as, as a term, as a concept. Um, and from here, it was only going to evolve particularly uh, with the with the rise of the internet and now obviously with our um, crypto space, so one dimensional to three dimensional. I think the community 1.0 was very very one dimensional um, because it was so so steeped in in this uh, physical realm. Community 2.0 um, it evolved slightly where it it kind of got extra. Uh, layers added onto it. So we we went to community 2.0, which then was a body of people or things viewed collectively. And obviously the the um, uh, the implications and the connotations that come with that. And community 3.0 really, which I think we are at right now, or certainly we are beginning to to see the the birth of this community 3.0 is this 360 degree human approach where we don't just fit into into a group but rather we choose to belong it is it isn't a passive situation that that we find ourselves in but rather it is a proactive choice that we make and that we um you know create for ourselves based on this process of self-discovery and what we value, what we don't, what we're passionate about, what we want to do. And the crypto community certainly is, is a very, very good example of this community 3.0 because we are all here based on our beliefs, based on what we feel is important for us to build, for us to redesign, for us to um, reshape um, in terms of models, in terms of, um, you know, recreating or, or redrawing the, the status quo and, and improving it. This is a quote that um, from Tim Berners-Lee, because I think the internet has been so, so important in this evolution and, and, and actually it caused potentially this, this evolution or certainly was the fuel for it. It is the fact that when the, the internet was created, it was for everyone. But um, obviously around uh, Web 2.0, we kind of lost that, uh, that control. And we, um, we kind of lost it to these powerful forces. Um, they use it for their own agendas. And this is something that uh, the, the, the guys earlier uh, in the meta track talking about blockchain and art and, and intellectual, intellectual property, is very much uh, about this. It's it's clear that we have uh, lost control a little bit, and and to bring it back and to make it, um, you know, the web for everyone again through our community, uh, 3.0 is is something that is not only doable but it is necessary. Because again, we we go to to the the crypto uh, community, we have been very lucky to kind of have the opportunity to to have all the the events and and a lot of IRL interactions that you know, spawned many, many different ideas and many um, wonderful projects. But how do we now go from there um, and and non-con and and uh, intercon before this? are key examples of this. How do we maintain that human connection in these virtual societies and in this virtual realm that we have now been flung into um, and, you know, kind of forced forced into um, where more and more people crave that authenticity and that connection. And a lot of people are um, feeling right now, certainly uh, that, that isolation that I think we as in the crypto community have felt 
at different times um, ourselves for for quite a while because we are used to wor- working remotely. We are used to um, working and collaborating across geographies. But really, how do we recreate or or um, try to? Uh, establish the human connection that that we had in in um, our IRL experiences in this virtual setting. What obviously what what is happening uh, as well as as a result of this is we are moving from this very very centralized um, setup of these um, you know connections of these um, abilities to collaborate and um, and connect. We're moving from those um, geographical, again, restrictions where we are, we used to always go to an event in a certain geography, in a certain space. If you could make it great, if you couldn't, tough. Today, what we are seeing is all of these notes, really what we're doing right now is pretty pretty damn decentralized uh, in terms of um, of these connections and and the the community and how it's evolving. And then actually one of the um, the key questions is how do we get even more um, you know um, empowered to do even more without reliance on on a single point of control or a single point of of failure, right? So this is actually a pretty good uh, illustration of how we're moving from uh, a centralized uh, eventing space to um, to a decentralized one. So you know, maybe this was all meant to happen. Um, one of the main things um, I, I speak about this when when we're talking about building communities, because I think you know we're seeing that community is actually incredibly, incredibly important, and this whole crypto um, situation is about communities, and and actually it's about it should be about empowering communities. We still have a long way to go, but what we are seeing, especially now that we are being pushed in this virtual space and and trying to recreate a lot of the collaboration and a lot of the culture and a lot of the the interactions that we had around the events in our in our calendars we need to to establish those tools that support communities and so number four for me and number five are incredibly incredibly important and actually are the key to community 3.0 so these tools and these strategies this again non-con is a great example and interest space before that and there will be many different um great uh conferences this year are all about how do we find better tools how do we find better technologies to essentially um make sure that our community thrives that um that we keep empowering uh communities that we keep creating um communities and and supporting them and so involving the members is incredibly important i am seeing this track today because again it's what we do we collaborate and and we help each other out and and involving the uh, involving each other in what everybody um in in what each of us are doing is incredibly important to keep that connection and keep that collaboration going and so if you look at the hierarchy of community needs we are obviously definitely um, innovating within the community and innovating through the community. Again, these experiences, these virtual um, conferences are all about that. They are about innovation and they are about coming up with solutions for a situation that, you know, we have been forced into, but by no means um, do we or should we feel hindered by. Like these, these are the times when innovation comes uh, comes in, comes through the community and um, and within it. And so, empowering people and delivering value, I think this is a very, very important piece. Where um, the more we we talk about power, and the more we we talk about, hey, we need to do away with these power struggles and people using power for nefarious reasons, and um, you know, benefiting the few versus the many. I feel we need to switch from thinking about power to thinking about empowerment, and. One of the main things that's that's that I'm very passionate about, and one of the main reasons why I am in this space is is all about empowerment and empowering individuals and communities to do more, to achieve more, to be able to access resources in terms of information, in terms of money, in terms of education that they 
the current system just does not um, offer them and and to deliver that value that right now is completely, completely um, removed from their grasp. And so I think this community 3.0 and what we're doing here and the more we we think with the community in mind and the more we think about how we can empower other people, that is where us as a crypto community can actually deliver that value. Um, and one of the things that that really um, struck a chord with me when um, we were at East London and uh, Albert from the EF um, did his keynote, this is one of the, the main things that, that he drove home was that this is the first time in a very long time that so many parts are accessible of the commute, uh, computing stack are, are not only accessible, but are being worked on in a very practical context. And I think that practical context is what we need to continue pushing forward and continue to focus on because, again, if this community is to thrive and if community 3.0 is to thrive, we need to make sure that we build things with the user in mind. We need to make sure that we build solutions for genuine problems and that we empower others to, to do the same. And I think the Dragon Quest, um, Meta Cartel's Dragon Quest hackathon that is happening um, uh, this month and in many other hackathons, very open to a lot of different archetypes, very open to a lot of different people coming in and figuring out what problems they want to solve, what do they want to build, and and then ensuring that they have access to resources and are able to, to collaborate will ensure that we we achieve this and actually, um, you know, turn this um, into our favor. And so the the keys to to this community is the accessibility, is the fact that it it should be open to everyone. It's it should be about engagement and um, and incentivization. I think this is one of the the key parts of being able to reward people and deliver that value. It is very much about. Uh, you know, getting people transferring value, essentially, if somebody creates value, they should be rewarded. Um, and, and that needs to that transfer of value needs to be incredibly, incredibly uh, simple. One of the and the reason why I say this is because one of the main examples of this empowerment and what is possible right now is um, a, a an example that I essentially um, kind of mix the two different projects um, that, that I'm passionate about and that I work in. It's about being able to support somebody um, in, you know, that isn't being served by the current um, system. So as an example, Brandon, um, who is part of the Bounties Network community, he started um, working on bounties to earn a living uh, for um, because he is homeless. He lives in Phoenix, Arizona, and he is um, he is uh, homeless. And uh, like I say, he started um, doing uh, bounties to earn a living and then cashing out at crypto ATMs. Um, one of the, at some point I noticed that he, he wasn't really um, fulfilling that many bounties anymore. And so I, I messaged him and say, Hey, are you okay? Is everything, um, is everything okay? And he basically mentioned that the straggly old laptop that he was using, um, had finally died a death. And so, um, you know, he wasn't able to, to work, um, like he, he was doing before. And so what I did was, um, simply put up a, a 30 second video, um, on, the people app uh, and said, do I know anybody in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, who might also have a secondhand laptop? Nobody was from Phoenix, Arizona. But um, what happened was within 48 hours, I had over $250 um, that people had sent me within the people app, which is a, a layer two application, um, so that I could then turn the money into an Amazon voucher, send Brandon the code, 
uh, and he would buy a um, a laptop, which is exactly what he did. So I was able to uh, to transfer those um, to exchange the Peepo tokens within the store for um, an Amazon voucher, sent him the code. He bought a laptop, got it delivered to an Amazon pickup point, and now the local library uh, lets him store it overnight so it doesn't get stolen or damaged. And I think these are the key applications that we're talking about, those practical applications, um, and they also are empowering and offering opportunity and choice. And I think this is an illustration of that redesign that we're talking about, that opportunity that is, again, potentially accessible to everyone, not just the few. So these are, um, you know, a, a, just an illustration, a very simple and straightforward one of how we can deliver that value and how we can empower people to to do more and, and access those resources that, that currently are just not open to them. Um, and so, Coming back to to the community element and and to the current situation is um, how do we recreate this? What we're seeing here, this is a, an image of the um, DEFCON scholars in Osaka last year. How do we recreate this in the virtual space? How can we enable those connections, enable those opportunities within this current situation that, that we find ourselves in. And hey, maybe this is even better. Maybe this could be uh, grown exponentially. We could reach so many more people because we do not have the element of in-person uh, connection, in-person attendance. So potentially this is something that we can use to our advantage. Potentially this is something, the situation where everything is virtual can be used um, to our advantage. And so again, coming back to Tim Berners-Lee, um, I think when something is, is incredibly creative, like um, the web, I think the the limitations truly are just um, in terms of, of imagination. We, at this point, are able to build, are able to collaborate, are able to create um, improvements, are able to create products and projects that will genuinely, genuinely redesign um, current models. And I think we should all be doing that across hackathons, um, you know, across figuring out how we can deliver um, value, whether it's in metagame or whether it's in um, in other projects, um, it, this is the time to, to do that and to bring forward this community 3.0 that we're chatting about based on empowerment and, and value. And that is it from me. Um, if there are any questions, um, I'm aware that we are uh, very, very... Um, uh, limited in terms of, of people um, here, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. If not, the next talk will be in about 40 minutes, um, and that will be, and I'll, I'll pop the, um, the schedule back on. Um, in, in the meantime, it will be Alessandro Mario Lagana Toski and Marco Vasapolo talking about the next wave of dApps without founders. I'm very keen to hear about that. I think it will be very interesting. Um, but yeah, let me know if there are any questions. Um, if not, we can just move on and, and wait for the next talk. Well, I just wanted to, to say thanks for the talk. Um, maybe to have a feedback, um, like you were speaking just by yourself at the beginning without any videos of the, the people from from the, the chat room. Uh, how actually do you feel it's like, uh, since we're talking about like communities and I mean, it's a bit like a, it's non-physical, you don't have images, you, don't, you barely have sounds. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it was actually quite um, nailing uh, the how, interactions can be built and and question extra on chat room having people just so yeah kind of being ghosting around so. it's a weird one like i'll be honest you know and and this is something that um i've uh, i've talked about before it's very very different from speaking in front of a, an audience and yeah. seeing the response that they have to what you're saying, whether it's a nod, whether it's a smile, whether it's, you know, somebody um, stopping what they're doing and actually listening to you. And you can get that read of the room mm. 
which just doesn't exist in this virtual space, right? right? And I think it is difficult because you're kind of, without getting cues from the audience, you're unable to sometimes make, you know, make a remark or make an observation about the environment. So yeah. let's take ECC as an example. You know, we had a lot of back and forth and a lot of banter about the the guy who was streaming uh, the, the, the talk and he wasn't at his post yet. And so we were wondering yeah. who he was and so on. So that, you know, those cues are just not here. Um, mm. and, and I wonder if the virtual, um, you know, the virtual spaces like crypto voxels and so on will create that. I'm not sure they can because right now, certainly in the in the shape that they're in right now, yeah. because yes, you can see avatars and you can see these weird uh, entities, but again, you read no cues. You don't see. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm. And so um, it's going to be an evolution. That's going to be an evolution as well. I think we will have to create certain things because of need. Um, mm. And need is the greatest motivator, right? When you need something, you go out and create it. And potentially, like I say, maybe this is a, a, you know, a terrible, terrible situation, but potentially it will make people create these solutions. I'm not quite sure what they will look like, but I think we have to do better because right now we're just using a lot of different tools that weren't designed for this. Like if you yeah, definitely like the that's the case uh, this uh, non-con in the space uh, it's it's quite amazing. Example. Like this is a great example, right? Mm. But everybody just even outside of the crypto space, everybody's now being forced to get on calls and so on. And they're using Zoom. Zoom is an enterprise product, right? Yeah. It wasn't designed to have, you know, wide audiences and be able to um to have that interaction. Um, but but again, this is an evolution. This is a work in progress. And I think the more we think about it and the more we learn how mm. what works and what doesn't, the closer we get to. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if you're in a hurry because uh, I've got like a couple of minutes to, to chit chat talking unless you, you want to see an, another conference. I don't know. So there's, um, yeah, there are a couple of uh, other rooms, but yeah, we can we can chat. A little bit more like i say the next talk here is is in about yeah, half an hour yeah. okay yeah but uh, you you may be interested in uh, other conference uh, that are come starting uh, soon so the other talks yeah okay okay so j briefly um yeah you probably saw me like in the meta game or probably colony and I've okay. been a bit, a bit uh, digging around. Um, um, I'm contributing to this project uh, called the Mana Box. Okay. And it is uh, crowdsourcing information to make a rating for corporations that have impacts on forests. Okay. And the idea is to give this information to the finance sector so as they can make uh, like uh, more aware decisions. Okay. Um, and so. It's a quite a techy project, but it started with people non really techy and we come to a point where we need to gather uh, or at least to find tools for local communities, but that are widespread uh, around the globe, especially around the forest uh, sectors. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I was uh, kind of looking at the, the Discord channel, how this tool can make uh, interactions or the, the idea is to find like the different layers you can pile up. So people have uh, in ties and, and get some belonging to, to the, uh, the community and the project as well. And so that's the, the beginning. And yeah, I mean, your, your talk was quite interesting on how you can yeah, start a, a community and what you need to make sure to gather people around the, your journey as well. So I think that the key aspects with creating a community is what is the vision and the purpose of that community. Mm. And it has to be higher than making money or um, yeah. higher than, you know, solve, um, let's say benefiting a small pocket of people. It mm. has to 
broader because that is what inspires people and mm-hmm. that's what drives people. If you look at things like religion, if you look at things that are, you know, um, philosophical trends and things like that, it is because it, even crypto, right? It is the yeah. belief in the the ability to to do more and something a lot greater than just speculating on the price of ETH, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when you create a community with a very, very clear vision, a lot of people will come in because they believe the same things that you do or mm-hmm. on a spectrum of belief. Yeah, that's me, yeah. Do. Mm-hmm. And then what can be achieved together? Mm-hmm. And I think that understanding that it is something based on collaboration, that everybody has a voice, that everybody can contribute, that everybody is in, you know, um, the same in terms of who they are, in terms of what they can contribute, in terms of the value that they can provide mm-hmm. is very, very important. So that okay. sense of belonging really comes from that and Looking at, for instance, the the Bounties Network community, one of the reasons why we had the Bounties Network very, very open in terms of what the Bounties were for is because we were really open to anybody, anybody who wanted to um, contribute, to collaborate, to work on something, to um, essentially um, uh, complete tasks, projects, get involved. It's important because you are providing or or looking at creating a an opportunity and a choice. Mm. Okay. Right now, a lot of people don't have a choice in what they're doing. Right. Mm, definitely. Just a last question, probably on my side, will be like uh, at the beginning of um, creating this community. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm taking the example where I've started like the. Discord chat um, and we'll probably be feeding the Discord chat like some task and what you can do easily and to onboard. Any feedback regarding uh, tools you've used on similar, on not similar project, but on, on community based projects and what are the pros and the cons? Um, just for my experience, um, I've been quite interested like with Discord and combining with SourceCred was like the, the whole thing with Colony Xora, but yeah, so Scred and Discord were at some very appalling um, uh, value contribution and ca- uh, accounting as well. So I think this one is definitely very good for um, for making sure for the I guess community management, right? Mm-hmm. But beyond that, and and obviously inviting conversations and uh, and involving again involving your community members. But I think what is incredibly incredibly important to do is to actually really create engaging opportunities for mm-hmm. the the members of the community, for new ones, for existing ones, to tap into um, you know conversations in a scenario like this, whether they are local. So for instance, wherever your community members are, encouraging them to have live discussions with people within their own community and Uh. see how a certain, that vision of your community, how does it apply locally? Are there any local issues or regional issues that you may not be aware of, but the people on the ground could potentially tell you, right? Mm. To involve them together. It's very important because that this back and forth and this dialogue is what will inform the the evolution of the project, is what will inform the evolution of the community without you assuming one you know, angle or one perspective and discounting the others. Having this dialogue and the opportunities to have dialogues, whether it's community calls every week, whether it's Q&As, whether it's AMAs, whether it's whatever you want to call them, it's really just a discussion. It's a dialogue. And keeping that open and making it a very, very purposeful, um, you know, engagement is very important. It's important for you and it's important for the members of the community because that is when they feel their contributions and their ideas are valued and are important. And I would also introduce incentives because incentives are incredibly, incredibly powerful. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 
whether they are monetary incentives or whether they are some sort of reputational incentives within that community and potentially the broader community, those are things to think about. Because again, uh, quantifying engagement, quantifying and valuing inputs, uh, valuing action are very, very uh, important pieces, particularly when you go, um, you know, uh, through different types of regions, through different backgrounds, through different um, ways of approaching community. Because again, let's remember, all of us probably have a slightly different definition of community, right? Some things are the same, but certain things, depending on our experiences of it, will be different. And I think being able to to allow for those differences and actually encourage them, because mm. that where discussion happens, that is where... Um, being considerate when you build something um, is is all about. And whether, again, in terms of tech, whether you use um, all of the different um, video technologies that are that are emerging now, like obviously not Zoom because it has all these privacy issues that we're now aware of, but there are so many alternatives and actually I'm putting together a little list of all of the ones that I've tried mm. in the video setting because I personally believe that the video setting is essential. Yeah, mm. you so far, but having like a, a conversation like this yeah. is important. Mm. And maybe a, a question on, um, because in terms of incentives, you mentioned like um, can be like reputation and financial, but it, it seems like there is this um, uh, social interaction layer that is missing and that is not, uh, that is, that has some quite friction yet um, today to, um, to value. It's a bit like uh, being in a, in a room where you, you will have a, a, a one-to-one conversation with someone because, yeah, you enjoy it. But um, in, in a chat, or uh, even in uh, like community call, like we're, we're having a, this discussion, the one-to-one, but probably like someone, if we would be in a physical space, would be having the same conversation or would like to have this uh, kind of conversation. And yeah, the, I haven't found any tools or um, yeah, beginning of solution on, on this one. I don't, I, I have an either. Um, mm. One of the things that I was chatting to the ETH Global guys about is, You know, when you have a, when you do a talk or a workshop, you then have a pool of people at the end will, you know, gravitate around you and you have a conversation Uh, and everybody contributes something. mm. Everybody then says, oh, this, oh, that, which is super hard to do with a raise your hand or, Mm. oh, let me just start talking. And then you're like, who is that? Mm. Um, So yeah, I haven't seen a a solution for that yet. Mm. And I think it is, it will probably be the most difficult thing to crack yeah. in the whole thing. Because one-to-one is fine. Mm. But how do you recreate that genuine engagement and passing of ideas that flows so naturally when you are face-to-face or when you are close to each other um, in, in this space? I don't know. Yeah. Um I'm very much waiting and I'm thinking of what the dynamics might be and I'm thinking about what the different options might be, but I, I, it's definitely a work in progress and it's not even like, it's not even at the beginning. It's like, uh, three, so okay, yeah, cool. you yeah. and me both, we're, we're both looking for the same thing. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much. Yeah. See you soon.